Roy Beals, and I am leading worship again this week as Worth and Nancy are getting some well-earned time away. We, we wish them an enjoyable and restful time. I was looking at in the computer earlier this week, and there was a website that listed um, holidays in May. You know, how, how they have a, a national this day or a national that day and all this. Today is National Lemonade Day. So everyone have a glass of lemonade. Um, I'd like to call your attention to the announcements on the back of the bulletin. In particular, um, the one about the Speak Out 2022, which is happening at 2 p.m. this afternoon. Uh, and that will be in the Haydenville Church in the, the dining room. And this is put on by the Williamsburg Players and uh, along with uh, the Meekins Library. So we invite you all to come and listen and perhaps take an opportunity to, to read something for the, the people gathered. Are there other announcements and concerns? Yes, Susan. Thank you, Susan. <coughs> Other announcements? Go ahead, Denise. On Tuesday evening at 6.30 at the Haydenville Fire Station, we will be honoring John Pope. This is the anniversary of his death. Thank you. Anything else? All right. Um, Coral Introit. I found my place. It's a Coral Introit is next. <laughs> this is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, who are those who dwell in it. Let the floods clap their hands. Let the hills sing for joy together before the Lord. For he comes to rule the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. And now sing our, our first hymn, For All the Saints. Number 637. Saints who from their labor 
Jesus, rest me, my faith be, for the world confessed my name. Oh, Jesus, be forever blessed. Join me now in the gathering prayer. Dear Lord, as we gather on this day, we are expressing our desire to be like you. Yet we know we fall short in so many ways. But you do not fall short in your love for us. It is our desire and willingness to model ourselves after you that draws us into this fellowship. We ask for your strength and your inspiration to guide us as we try and sometimes succeed in being accepting of others. Others with totally different opinions, backgrounds, or lifestyles. Let us remember that you are at a table for tax collectors, and others who were deemed by the pious to be unworthy of your attention. In our desire to be like you, let us listen to others without planning our comeback argument, but to have an open mind and seek to understand. This is our prayer. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end.
Evelyn Beals will do our first scripture reading this morning. What? Anthem first? Oh, I'm jumping ahead already. I'm reading the first scripture from the Good News Bible this morning. And it relates the story of the conversion of Paul, of Saul, rather. In the meantime, Saul kept up his, his violent threats of murder against the followers of the Lord. He went to the high priest and asked for letters of introduction to the synagogues of Damascus so that if he should find there should be any followers of the way of the Lord, he, he would be able to arrest them, both men and women, and bring them back to Jerusalem. As Saul was coming near the city of Damascus, suddenly a light from the sky flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? he asked. 
I am Jesus, whom you persecute. The voice said, but get up and go into the city where you must do, you will be told what you must do. The men who were traveling with Saul had stopped, not saying a word. They heard the voice, but could not see anyone. Saul got up from the ground and opened his eyes, but could not see a thing. So they took him by the hand and led him into Damascus. For three days he was not able to see, and during that time he did not eat or drink anything. There was a Christian in Damascus named Ananias. He had a vision in which the Lord said to him, Ananias, I am here, Lord, he answered. The Lord said to him, get ready and go to Straight Street. And at the house of Judas, ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul. He is praying, and in a vision he has seen a man named Ananias come in and place his hands on him so that he might see again. Ananias answered, Lord, many people have told me about this man and all the terrible things he has done to your people in Jerusalem. And he has come to Damascus with authority from the chief priest to arrest all who worship you. The Lord said to him, Go, because I have chosen him to serve me, to make my name known to Gentiles and kings and the people of Israel. And I myself will show him all that he must suffer for my sake. So Ananias went, entered the house where Saul was, and placed his hands on him. Brother, Saul said, the Lord has sent me, Jesus himself, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here. He sent me so that you might see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. At once, something like fish scales fell from Saul's eyes, and he was able to see again. He stood up and was baptized, and after he had eaten, his strength came back.
This scripture reading is from the book of John, chapter 21, verses 1 through 19. After this, Jesus appeared once more to his disciples at Lake Tiberias. This is how it happened. Simon Peter, Thomas, called the twin, Nathaniel, and one from Cana in Galilee, and sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples of Jesus were all together. Simon Peter said to the others, I'm going fishing. We will come with you, they told him. So they went out in a boat, but all that night they did not catch a thing. As the sun was rising, Jesus stood at the water's edge, but his disciples did not know it was Jesus. Then he asked them, young men, haven't you caught anything? Not a thing, they answered. He said to them, throw your net out on the right side of the boat and you will catch some. So they threw the net out and could not pull it back in because they had caught so many fish. The disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, is it, is, it is the Lord. When Peter heard that, that it was the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken his clothes off, and jumped into the water. The other disciples came to shore in the boat, pulling the net full of fish. They were not very far from land, about a hundred yards away. When they stepped ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you have just caught. Simon Peter went aboard and dragged the net ashore full of big fish, 153 in all. Even though there was so many, still the net did not tear. Jesus said to them, come and eat. None of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? because they knew it was the Lord. So Jesus went over, took the bread, and gave it to them. He did the same with the fish. This, then, was the third time Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from death. After they had eaten, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these others do? Yes, Lord, he answered, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, take care of my lambs. A second time, Jesus said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes, Lord, he answered, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, take care of my sheep. A third time, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter became sad because Jesus asked him the third time, Do you love me? And so he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Take care of my sheep. I am telling you the truth. When you were young, you used to get ready and go anywhere you wanted to. But when you're old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will tie you up and take you where you do not want to go. In saying this, Jesus was indicating the way in which Peter would die and bring glory to God. Then Jesus said to him, follow me. These are the readings for this morning. Let us now be in prayer. O oh God, 
who is always with us, hear our prayer. Be with our family and friends, especially those in pain, and see that they can find lasting relief. Be with those struggling with the recent loss of a loved one. Be near and help them keep it together. Be with your people undergoing medical tests and making decisions based on the test results. And also be with those facing medical procedures. Be with them before, during, and after their treatment. Dear, look, dear God, be with the people all around this sphere that we call home. People suffering in so many ways, from hunger, from the pain of loss, from natural causes of weather, as in drought or flood or fire. Be with those suffering by the hand of another, be it by a person or a nation. Enter into the hearts of the oppressor and set the captives free. And now be with us and hear our silent prayers. Our prayers we have given to you with our grateful thanks for all that you have done for us, including give us, giving us your Son, in whose name we now pray, as he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us sing our hymn in the garden number 227 <laughs> Another has 
May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, O God. There are many Bible verses and accounts about the voice of God. Most of them describe it as a tremendous roll of thunder, one that shakes the ground you stand on. There are other accounts of his voice being like a pleasant personal conversation as when he spoke with Moses on the mountain. In 1 Kings chapter 19, we hear about Elijah who took shelter in a cave and he was told to go out and stand on the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great strong wind tore the mountains and broke in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire, the sound of a low whisper. It was the small whisper that spoke to Elijah. Have you heard the voice of God? If you tell me that you have, I will not have a speck of disbelief. And when you heard his voice, were you alone in a quiet room or in a workshop with a din of machines? Or were you on a noisy rattling bus? Did the voice come only to you as though you had earbuds from your phone stuck in your ears? And did you recognize the voice by its sound only or by how it made you feel. In my imagining, I expect a feeling of calm to be present, unless his message is for emergency action. And then the feeling would be like anxious alarm. The voice of God may not always come in audible ways. We have heard in scriptures of God coming in a dream as he did to Joseph, telling him to rise and take the child and his mother and flee Egypt in order that Herod would not find them. As we heard in today's reading in the book of Acts, God came to Ananias and told him to seek Saul. He was to lay his hands on Saul in the name of Lord Jesus, thus restoring his sight and filling Saul with the Holy Spirit. And with that, Saul became Paul, writer of letters to many nations, giving them guidance 
and support. God's voice may come as a wave of inspiration, as it may have come to Handel, enabling him to write the Messiah. A 259-page score written in a mere 24 days. I spent three days working on three pages. And then if Evelyn hadn't typed them for me on the computer, I'd still be at the keyboard hunting, pecking, backspacing, and correcting. Perhaps to some people, the voice of God is not an actual voice, but how his presence makes you feel. Just for a short time each other day, be still. Relax. Take in your surroundings. Allow the calm to wash over you. Let go of your to-do list. Breathe slowly and easily. Close your eyes if you wish. And feel his presence with you. Though I may not have heard a voice, I do feel him with me. This week, I was waiting for someone who was seeing a doctor. And I was in the parking lot writing part of my sermon, or, or at least trying to write. I wrote only a couple of lines and lost what I wanted to say. So I sat on a warm car in the sunshine. I just watched people and cars coming and going. Occasionally, the wind jostled the car. I just watched, and and the jostling of the car was very soothing. It felt like being rocked in a cradle. In that time, I felt that I was not alone but that a loving presence was there with me. I can't honestly say that I have heard his voice, but I can say that I can feel his nearness. If at some point I do hear the voice of God, I hope I am ready and willing to respond in the way that he calls me to. Amen. Let us sing our final hymn, In the Bulb There is a Flower, number 638.
the future, what it holds a mystery, unrevealed until it sees and something God alone can see. In our end is our beginning, in our time infinity, in our doubt there is believing, in our life eternity, in our death the resurrection, in the last a victory, unrevealed until it sees them. Something God alone can see. As we arise and go out and about, let us show our love for you, O God. Help us to mirror and project your love to those we meet. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. to shine on you. May 